So we've now looked at how to calculate the work done by the gravitational force, which we can model as constant, at least close to the surface of the Earth. We've also looked at this slightly more complicated case of how to calculate the work done by a spring force, which was interesting because it varied with the displacement of the mass from equilibrium, so it was dependent upon x. So what we're going to consider now is a slightly more general form. What happens if we have a force acting in the x direction, which is dependent on x, but we don't necessarily know exactly how? Can we come up with an expression for the work done by this force? And when we, if, and when we do come up with this expression, is it consistent with the work kinetic energy for, um, theorem? Okay, so now we're going to consider the work done by some force. Let's call it F of X and Y acting upon a particle. And we'll assume that the, when the X component is only dependent upon the X value and that the Y component is only dependent upon the y value so that we can split our force into an x component like this one and a y component like this one. And what we want to know is how much work is done by the force as the particle moves from x initial y initial to x final y final and we'll start by considering the x com the x component then we know that the work done is equal to f of x i times the displacement which is also in the i direction. Now, what's complicated about this one is that our force depends upon our location. So this is the same as we had with the spring. So we're going from some initial location to some final location. And what we're going to want to do is break it up into a whole lot of little increments and work out how much work needs to be done along each of these increments. So let's start by choosing a location, which we'll call x, and we'll consider how much work needs to be done to move it to x plus dx, and we'll assume that f of x is constant between x and x plus dx. We're going to choose dx so that it's so small that this is true. If it's not true, then we make dx smaller so that it is true. So I've drawn these two circles next to each other. They don't have to be ne necessarily next to each other. They could be pretty much on top of each other, but then we could, wouldn't be able to see them clearly, which is why I haven't drawn them that way. So dx is a very, very little increment. Okay, so we can work out that little increment of work. So to get from here to here, we have to do some work dw. And we've got the d in front of it because it's just a small amount of work because we're just going a very, very small distance. So dw is equal to f of x dx. But then what we want to do to work out the total work to get from x initial here to x final here is we want to sum up all of our dw's. So we have the total work is equal to the sum of all the dw's and we're going from x is equal to x initial to x is equal to x final. So that's the sum of all f of x dx from x is equal to x initial to x is equal to x final. But summing these up is literally integrating them. So we're integrating from x initial to x final of f of x dx. So this is how much work is done in the x direction. And because this is an integral, you can see that if we were to plot a graph here of f of x and here of x and say it looked something like this, and this is x initial and this is x final, then the area under the graph 
is equal to the work done in the x direction because that's just what an integral is. So we can say that the area under a force versus displacement graph gives the work done on an object. Okay, so in this case, we've come up with an expression for the work done in the x direction. If we were con to consider the work done in the y direction, here, then we just need to do the same thing and we'd have that the work done, let's call that work done in the x direction, the work done in the y direction will be equal to the integral from the initial y displacement to the final y displacement of f of y dy. So the work done will be equal to work in the x direction plus the work done in the y direction. Now if we were considering a three-dimensional case, then we'd have the z direction here as well. So this is how we can get the total work done. Now what we're interested in is, is this consistent with the work kinetic energy theorem? So Let's scroll up a little bit. Yeah, we'll keep that. Okay, so the work kinetic energy which told us that the work done on a particle is equal to the change in the kinetic energy of a particle. Okay, so we want that work done is equal to the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. And does that hold if, we'll just consider the one dimensional case, if the work done is equal to the integral of f of x dx from x initial to x final. Okay, so in order to solve this, we get to have a little bit of fun with some integration. So we can write this as the integral. Now we know that the net force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So this is ma dx from x initial to x final. Now the acceleration is just equal to dv dt, the change in the velocity with time. So we can write, well, ma dx, which is what we've got inside this integral here. So I've written that down there, is equal to m dv dt dx. And what we can do is we can write this as m dv dx dx dt dx. So this is using the chain rule. Because I've got a dx on the bottom and a dx on the top, this is like multiplying it by one. So these two would cancel out and this would get me back to this expression here. But in this case, I have done this for a specific reason. dx dt is equal to v. So I can write this as mv so that's the dx dt times dv dx dx. And now I've got this dx and this dx which cancel out. So this is mv dv. So now I can replace my expression in this integral up here with mv dv. But when I do that, because I've changed my variable here from a dx to a dv here, I'm going to have to replace the limits on my integral as well. So if we take v is equal to vi at x is equal to xi and v is equal to vf at x is equal to xf. Okay, so we've now got the work done is equal to the integral from the initial speed to the final speed of mv dv. And now we can integrate this. And so this is equal to mv squared on 2 
and we need to evaluate that at the initial speed and the final speed. So this is equal to a half m v final squared minus a half m v initial squared. And a half m v final squared is hopefully familiar to you as the final kinetic energy. And this is minus the initial kinetic energy. So now you can see that after doing a little bit of calculus and rearranging, we've shown that the work kinetic energy theorem does hold for this generalized force acting in the x direction. Let's have a look at a couple of different problems that we can solve with these equations now. So the question is, a force slides a 2.0 kilogram block along a frictionless surface. The block starts from rest. The force is shown in the figure. What is the block's speed at part 1? x is equal to 1 meter, part 2, x is equal to 4 meters, part 3, x is equal to 6 meters. Okay, so in order to do this, we're going to need to make use of our work kinetic energy theorem, because if we can calculate the total work, then we can calculate the change in kinetic energy. We know that the block, it tells us here that the block starts from rest. Now, if the block starts from rest, that tells us that the initial kinetic energy is a equal to a half mv initial squared and v initial is zero, so this is zero. So it starts with no kinetic energy. So this tells us that the work done is equal to the final kinetic energy. So we can calculate the final kinetic energy and from that we can get the final speed. Okay, so in part one, we need to calculate the work done on the block as it goes from zero to one. So the work done is equal to the area under a F versus displacement graph which is what we have here so we just need to calculate this area in here so we're literally calculating the area of this triangle okay so to calculate the area of a triangle area of triangle equals half the base times the height so this is equal to a half times 1 times 10 so this is equal to 5. So there's 5 joules of work done on it, which is equal to the final kinetic energy, which is a half mv squared, where we're trying to find v. So v squared is equal to 2 times the 5. So v, so the v squared is equal to 2 times the 5 and then divided by the mass. And we're told up the top here that the mass is equal to 2. So we're dividing it by the 2 kilograms. So v squared is equal to 5, which tells us that the v is equal to 2.2 meters per second. Okay, now in part two, we're asked to do the same thing at four meters, but that means that we need to calculate the area of this trapezium here. So if we call this length B and this length A, then this is our height. The area of a trapezium, which is the work done, is equal to a plus B on 2 times the height. So I always think of that as the average length. Okay, so we can substitute in A, we're going from 1 to 3. So that's a length of 2. And B is going from 0 to 4. So that's a length of 4. So 2 plus 4 on 2 times 10. So 2 plus 4, that's 6 divided by 2, which is 3. So this is equal to 3 times 10, which is 30 joules is done and that's equal to a half mv squared so rearranging this v squared is equal to 2 times 30 on m which is 2 the twos cancel out and so v is equal to the square root of 30 which is equal to 5.5 meters per second okay now with part three we 
have to calculate this area as well. And notice that this area is below the graph. So this is negative, whereas up here we've got positive. So what we'll do is we'll calculate that orange yellow triangle now. So the work done from 4 to 6 is equal to minus 10, because that's the height times half the base. Now the base is from 4 to 6, so 6 minus 4 is 2, so half the base is times 1. So this is equal to minus 10 joules. So the work done from 0 to 6 is equal to the 30 joules, because that's the trapezium, which we've just calculated above, minus the 10 joules, so that's equal to 20 joules. And so, again, this is equal to a half mv squared. m is 2, so this is equal to v squared. So v is equal to the square root of 20, which is equal to 4.5 meters per second. So by calculating the work, we've been able to calculate the speed of the block. So the question is, a force given by f is equal to 3x squared i plus 2jn moves a particle from 0, 0 to 3, 2. How much work is done on the particle? Does the speed increase, decrease, or stay the same? Okay, so to answer this one, it makes sense to split it into an x component and a y component. So the work done in the x direction is going to be the integral from the initial x position to the final x position of the force as a function of x dx. And so the force in the x direction as a function of x is this purple part here. And so we can write this as the integral. Now the initial x position is given here. This is x initial, and this one here is x final. So we shall substitute those in. We're going from 0 to 3, and then f of x, that's 3x squared, and then dx. So now we're integrating this. When we integrate 3x squared, we end up with x cubed. So if I was to differentiate x cubed, this 3 would come down the front and I'd end up with 3x squared. So it's worth just checking once you've integrated something that if you differentiate it, you do get the correct expression back. So then we're going from 0 to 3. So this is equal to 3 cubed minus 0 cubed, which is equal to 3 cubed. And 3 cubed is equal to 27. Okay, and then in the y direction, we're going from y initial, which is here, here's y initial, here's y final. So we're going from 0 to 2, and our y part of this is the 2j, so this is just a constant 2 dy. And so when we integrate 2 with respect to y, we end up with 2y. And we're going from 0 to 2. And so this is equal to 2 times 2, which is 4. And then minus 2 times 0, which is 0. So this is equal to 4. So the work done is equal to work done in the x direction plus work done in the y direction. So this is 27 plus 4, which is equal to 31 joules. Okay, and then it says, does the speed increase, decrease, or stay the same? In this case, we've done positive work. If we've done positive work, it means that the final kinetic energy must be greater than the initial kinetic energy from the work kinetic energy forum. And so this means that it has sped up. It's going faster. So as work is positive, the final kinetic energy is greater than the initial kinetic energy, which tells us that this final speed is greater than the initial speed, which means that it has increased its speed.